start with a scripture from Paul's letter to the Romans. Paul said in Romans 8, 25, if we, but if we hope for what we do not see, with perseverance, we wait eagerly for it. You know what? I, I'm waiting for the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I pray even so, come Lord Jesus. There are, there are other things in our life, in our ministry, that we have hope for. But it takes perseverance yes. in our lives to do it. To persevere means to persist in anything that you undertake. Mm -hmm. To persist in it, okay? To maintain a purpose in spite of difficulty, in spite of obstacles, or in spite of discouragement. To continue steadfastly, to endure. It comes from the Latin perseverare, which means to be severe, to be very serious. Mm -hmm. Okay? And as Christians, filled with the joy of the Lord, we're going to be very, very serious, mm -hmm. okay? Because the purpose of our lives and the, uh, the things that we do, are they are life-giving because we are ambassadors for Christ. We bring the knowledge of his presence into every place. So this is serious business. Yes. It's not to be taken lightly. And I think in the world today, we tend to take, or the world tend to take take things very, very lightly, mm -hmm. okay? Not seriously. We need to be serious about God, right. they have, about the Lord, and to be serious about the things of God. Right. The world has a whatever attitude. That's exactly right. Uh, by the way, one of the schools that we started years ago, a Christian school we started, that, that was one of the banned words yes. for our students. <laughs> they were not allowed to say whatever, okay? <laughs> no, you better know what you're doing. You know, better know what you're about, and you better be serious about it. So I think... More often than not, when we think about persevering, we're thinking about our ability to deal with trials and tribulations, mm -hmm. right? Uh, with afflictions. And remember, it says in Psalm 34, 19, that many are the afflictions of the righteous, okay? There are. I mean, if you've been saved for more than a day, you ought to know that when when we sing the great old hymn, I don't think we I don't hear it an awful lot anymore, but what a friend we have in Jesus. Yes. Yeah. When you have a friend in Jesus, brother, I'll tell you what, you got an enemy on the other side. That's right. Okay, and he's going to come against you. There's no doubt about it. So you've got to persevere against these things. Fortunately, and I've said this so much in, in the study that we've been doing, whatever God calls you to do, whatever he calls you for, he equips you for. So God has a plan to build endurance, perseverance in your life. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. It's like a, it's like a little in, uh, perseverance factory. In Romans 5, starting in verse 3, it says this, And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, mm -hmm. and perseverance proven character, and proven character hope. And hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Well, well, let me start in the order. It's when you can give thanks in all things. And that's that's what it says, you know, Paul in his letter to the Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. He says that we're to rejoice always. We're to pray without ceasing. We're to give thanks in all things. For this is the will of God for us in Christ Jesus. So when in the midst of these tribulations that are the afflictions that are common, to, to, to the saints, what happens is when we're giving thanks, it that builds that perseverance in our life. And that perseverance builds proven character. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things in the world around us today, that is one of the things that is so obviously lacking, is character. There's no moral, moral character, right? Mm -hmm. Why? Because people aren't standing in the face of tribulation. I'm a war baby. I was born during the Second World War. You, your house was born right after the at the end of the Second World War, and you are way, way after, way way after. 
Mark's one of the kids in the group. That's right. He's, he's, a, he's, he's our youth, youth group. group. He's our youth group, yes. <laughs> but the point is, that generation, I think, uh, was it Brokaw wrote a book, The Greatest Generation, about mm -hmm. the people, the yes. sacrifice that, that my father, Alice's father, that generation of people, your father too probably, right. that generation that went through the Second World War, they had to sacrifice. After that, they didn't want their children to have to suffer that same sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So what came out of that was what was known as the me generation. Those baby boomers were the me generation. They, their parents baby, babied them, coddled them, gave them whatever they wanted, spoiled them. Yes. As a reaction to the hardship that they had gone through. It wasn't a good thing. Yeah. I mean, it's from a natural point of view, it's, under, it's easy to understand. But because they didn't face those trials and tribulations... That proven character was not generated in them, not built in them. Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him.